So this is a big day for the Central Valley, California. And I want to thank everybody for being here. This is a vital action, in my opinion, vital to improve access to water in the American West. What's happened there is disgraceful. They've taken it away. There's so much water, they don't know what to do with it, and they send it out to sea. For decades, burdensome federal regulations have made it extremely difficult and expensive to build and maintain federal water projects. You all know about that. Millions of Americans in the West depend on critical water infrastructure to irrigate farmland, provide water and power, and support our economy. Some of the best farmland in the world, by the way, can't be used because they don't have water, but they actually have a lot of water. In a few moments, I will sign a presidential memorandum to dramatically improve the reliable supply and delivery of water in California, Oregon, and Washington. We are honored to be joined by Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Yes, sir. Where is Kevin? Come here, Kevin. He traveled a long way to be here. And Representatives Devin Nunes, Jeff Denham, David Valadeo, and Tom McClintock. These are tremendous people. They love this country. They love the state. And uh, I appreciate you all being here. Thank you, fellas. This is great. Thank Very you. important. And they are the ones that really led this drive because it was it was so unfair. I was uh, telling the story that I was with Devin driving up this beautiful highway, and I'm looking at farmland. And it was bone dry. And they'd have a little patch, just a little patch in the corner of such beautiful green, a tiny percentage of this massive area. And then I go a step further, you'd see another one, big, big area, hundreds of acres, and you'd have just a little patch. And I say, could I ask you a question? Do you have a drought? Is there a problem? No, we don't have a drought. We have so much water. But they don't let the water come down into the valley and into the areas where you need the water. And I say, I've never seen anything. What do they do? They route it into the Pacific Ocean. And I say, why do they do that? And the reason I don't even want to discuss it, it's so ridiculous. But you have so much water coming from way up north. And you'll have — Devin told me this, numerous people told me this — the best farmland potentially in the world, if you have water. The land itself, the soil, gives you the best farmland I've heard in the world. What that could mean for California and for the economy of California, because you're talking about hundreds of thousands of acres of land where the water is so plentiful, and the land is the best there is. So I've heard that from many different farmers. So today, I'm directing Secretary Zinke and Secretary Wilbur Ross to streamline approvals for federal water infrastructure and to eliminate all unnecessary burdens significantly speeding up the environmental review and approval process. We will have it done very, very quickly. Um, we're also speaking to the EPA, and they're all ready to go. As soon as I sign this, they're ready to go. So the big problem was the federal approvals that were ungettable, and now they're very gettable. We're going to have them in very fast time because of the gentleman standing behind me. Nobody else brought it up to my attention. It was them. In particular, we will resolve the issues blocking completion of the Central Valley Project and the California State Water Project in California. And this will be done within a record period of time. Nobody will ever see anything like this, because it's basically been looked at — I don't know if you guys know — for years. Yeah. Yeah. Tens of millions of dollars have been spent looking at it, but that's all they do. They look. Nobody does anything about it. The Klamath Irrigation Project in Oregon and the Columbia River Basin in Washington, all of these states benefit tremendously in terms of jobs, in terms of the environment. I think it's important to say the environment. Together, we rebuild our water infrastructure. We'll do something that hasn't been done in — how many years has that been since we've done a project like that? A little longer. 1979. Yeah. It's a long time. And this is even bigger. This is a bigger impact than anything they've done, even from 1979. And make our communities more beautiful places to live and work and grow and make them so environmentally incredible. And so it's a great honor to be uh, signing the new memorandum. And uh, this will move things along at a record clip.
and you have a lot of water. I hope you enjoy the water that you're going to have, okay? We need it. The farmers are going to enjoy it. Great for the farmers, great for the people, great for recreation, great for everything you can think of. And now, the next time I ride up that road, I think we're going to see a lot of green. It's going to be 100 percent green instead of 4 percent green. So I'll sign it right now. Okay. Very important. And uh, who should get this pen? I think, uh, I think so, right? I think David. Thank you. Thank you very much. So he'll get the one that I actually use, but I'm going to give the other guys one anyway. <laughs> just, just don't tell them, okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right. It's funny, I've watched presidents over the years, and they sign one letter at a time. One letter, <laughs> one. And you look at it, and it's really terrible. And so why do it this way, right? It's a little bit better. Uh, do you have any questions for the congressman, please? Oh, Mr. President, can you give us an update on a different subject? Anything well, let's talk about this first, and I'll do that. I will. I will talk about it. I mean, the one thing I want to make about this, I, I want to thank the President, because this is just another campaign promise he's keeping. For you, if you're not out west, from Washington, Oregon to California, water is one of the most critical issues. And the most difficult part about this, this will streamline. This will bring more water, not only to Washington and Oregon, but throughout the Central Valley. And it is true, this is the best farmland in the world. But the amount of jobs and the ability to keep our food safe, but this could bring more than a million acre feet of water just within the valley itself. And this is something all of us have been working a great deal on, especially within your district as well, David. Well, in my district, it's not just farm ground. There are actual communities that rely on this water. So that some of this water will actually go into homes of people who have been desperately needing this water for a long time. So it affects people in the workplace. It helps put them back to work, but also helps them live a normal life with a, a steady water supply for those communities. So thank you, Mr. President. This is the number one issue you ran on. Yeah, I mean, this is an issue we've been working on for a long time, Mr. President. So I want to thank you for signing this today. Uh, it really is the first time since John F. Kennedy that we've had a U.S. president actually come to the valley and act on what he said he was going to act on. Uh, and so that goes back to the 1960s. So, Mr. President, thank you. You came out there not once, but twice. Uh, you made a commitment in 2016. And today, uh, he's fulfilling the commitment because we have been overlooked for a very long time uh, in the central part of California, which is the breadbasket of the world. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Jeff. You've been on that yeah, taking away our water uh, takes away our jobs, takes away the economy, and the largest agriculture industry in the country. Um, but it's also our green power, our hydropower. And the state is uh, trying to double our flows right now and push more water uh, out to the ocean that will just cripple our economy and affect our drinking water. And so um, Lake Don Pedro is also going through uh, FERC licensing to make sure that we actually are building and fixing our dams as well as making sure that uh, we've got that water uh, for the future. So this is a, this is a critical help to, uh, to the entire valley. And Tom's been the committee chair making a lot of this. Oh, yeah, well, I'll tell you what I learned is, is uh, chairing uh, the uh, subcommittee on water and power. Droughts are nature's fault. They happen. But water shortages are our fault. That's a choice that we made a generation ago when we began imposing laws that have uh, made the development of our water resources uh, cost prohibitive. Uh, this uh, order today and the other actions by this administration and the uh, bills that have been passed out of the House uh, move us back toward an era of abundance as the cornerstone of our water and power policy rather than the scarcity and rationing uh, that uh, uh, two generations of bad laws and bad regulations have imposed on one of the most water-rich regions of the country. It's funny, when I met with the farmers, great people, met with a lot of them, and we were in a group at the end. Everybody came together. And I said, gee, I feel so badly about the drought that you people are suffering. They said, we don't have a drought. We have so much water. And I said, explain this to me. Then I said, how did this ever happen? That was the one thing they couldn't explain, how a thing like this could happen. So you have tremendous land. And, and literally, I have heard, in terms of the land itself, it's as good as it gets anywhere in the world for farming. Uh, but they cut off artificially. I mean, the water used to come down. They cut it off artificially. So we're going to reopen it the way it used to be, and it's going to be great. It's going to be great for the economy. It's going to be great for the farmers and for a lot of other reasons. And 
I guess employment, you're talking about a yeah. lot. Oh, you're yeah. talking about a lot of people. So we're very happy about it. And these are the people that get the credit, not me. They're the ones that brought it to my attention and, and very strongly. And Devin was incredible. He was uh, — it took about two minutes to explain. I said, this can't be possible. But all you have to do is look at those dry as a bone field. And then you look at a little patch, the most green, most beautiful thing you've ever seen. The whole thing can be like that. And it's tens of millions of dollars coming into the state of California and other states. And we look forward to doing it. It's my great honor. Yes. But Mr. President, you said yesterday that you would be considering severe consequences for Saudi Arabia yeah. about the killing of the journalist. What are you considering? Well, I think it's too early to say. We want to see. We're doing investigations right now. We have uh, a lot of people working on it. We do. And we have other countries working on it, as you know. It's a very serious problem. And people are going to be very much involved in this, too, indirectly and directly. Uh, it's something uh, that we don't like. It's very serious stuff. And uh, we're going to get to the bottom of it, and we'll make that determination. I'm going to have very much Congress involved in determining what to do. Uh, if you remember with Justice Kavanaugh, I said, hey, look, the senators are doing a great job. Senator Grassley, Lindsey, uh, John Cornyn, all of them, every one of them. I said, let them decide what to do in terms of that investigation. And I think I'll have a very similar attitude on this. I think, you know, we have Congress is very much involved. I will in this case, make certain recommendations. Uh, we have $450 billion worth of things ordered from a very rich country, Saudi Arabia. Uh, 600,000 jobs, maybe more than that. And it would be very uh, hurtful to this country if we said, oh, we're not going to sell it to you. So there are other things we can do, but I would certainly make that recommendation to Congress. But I will very much listen to what Congress has to say. Uh, they feel very strongly about it also. So I'll be doing this with Congress. I do hope that they'll be able to uh, see the way clear to take uh, — to make these products. We're talking about uh, almost every state in the Union is affected because it's the largest order ever given. I did this. I went to Saudi Arabia first. And a large part of the reason was they agreed to do this. They agreed to spend $450 billion on buying and investing in the United States. So I hope we can keep that. I hope we don't lose track of that. There are plenty of other things we can do. Uh, but we're going to have some answers pretty quickly. But I will have Congress involved, which I think is an important part of your question. Is okay. sanctions one of the things that you would consider? Could be. Could be. And we're going to find out. We're going to find out who knew what, when, and where. And we'll figure it out. OK. Any other questions? Mr. President, are you considering uh, curtailing U.S. support for Saudi's involvement in, in the Yemen war? Toward the what? The Saudi's involvement in Yemen. So it's targeting it in the — So Saudi Arabia has been a great ally of ours. That's why this is so uh, sad. You look at what goes on in Iran and the viciousness of that regime, and it's uh, brutal. It's a brutal regime. The killing. Uh, the horror stories, you hear them and you write about them very well. I mean, I've seen you write about them very well. Uh, it's a tough part of the world, there's no question about it. But uh, Saudi Arabia has been a great ally. They've been a tremendous investor in the United States. They've invested, and uh, the jobs are incredible. In addition, it's a big uh, — we're right now the largest supplier of, of energy in the world. We are, the United States. And it happened, I hate to tell you, over the last 18 months. And we're now the biggest in the world. But still, they're a major, major supplier. They're actually number two. And we have to take all of these things into account. Very important. But we're going to know over the next two or three days, we're going to know a lot. We're getting a lot of information in as we speak. Okay? Do you expect to have those recommendations for, for Congress by Monday, or the, the conclusions of the investigation? I might, I might know uh, a lot by Monday, yeah. I know a lot already. Well, I guess there's a question of why you've waited so far to — Well, I think waiting two days and making sure everything's right is not so bad. Okay, so early. Yeah, but we're going to we're gonna have it pretty early. We've, we've done a lot of work on this. Yes? Um, sir, if we wait for the results of the investigation, do you regret bringing up last night at your rally the 
assault on a reporter by a congressman? No, 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 no. That was a different world. That was a different league, a different world. No, he's just a great guy, and he's a — he's — you know Greg very well, right? It was uh, — that was a tremendous success last night in Montana, and uh, Greg is a tremendous person, and he's a tough cookie, and I'll stay with that. Uh, it's a different — you're talking about a different world. Anything else? Uh, Mr. President, uh, today, the Justice Department unleashed uh, — unsealed an indictment uh, against a Russian national uh, who's accused of trying to influence the uh, election. Had nothing to do with my campaign. You know, all of the hackers and all of the — everybody that you see, nothing to do with my campaign. If they're hackers, a lot of them probably like Hillary Clinton better than me. Now they do. Now they do. But, uh, you know, they go after some hacker in Russia, and they say, yeah. oh, that had nothing to do with my campaign. Would you have any warning to Russia or other or other countries or state actors that are trying to — I've already them? said it. And, you know, I, I always say this, uh, Kevin, you've heard me say this yes. many times. You've said it. President Obama was contacted by the FBI in September, long before the election in November. And they told him there may be meddling by the Russians. And he did nothing about it, because he thought Hillary Clinton would win. He did nothing. He didn't do — he didn't lift a finger. He didn't spend a dime. We've done a lot to protect the elections coming up very shortly. But President Obama — people don't want to bring it up. The fake news don't want to bring it up. President Obama was told in September by the FBI that there could be problems with Russian meddling. Now, the good thing is, every single report — as you know, Richard Burr came out, Senator Richard Burr, head of the Senate Intelligence. Uh, they said, did you see any collusion? No collusion. I've seen no collusion whatsoever. Very strong. Couldn't be stronger. But the good news is, it never affected — whatever did take place never affected the vote. And everybody agrees to that. Never affected the vote. Uh, the candidate affected the vote. The bad candidate. She should have gone to Wisconsin. She should have gone more to North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Florida. She should have gone out a little bit more. She had to work a little bit harder. That affected the vote. Okay, how about one more? Is there okay. specifically are you going to do about this caravan that's heading to the oh, caravan. About specific actions? So we have the worst laws in the history of the world because we don't have a big enough majority. We have great people standing behind me. We could write up the laws in — in a half an hour, you'd have the greatest laws that would stop all the problems. The problem is, we need support from Democrats, because we have small majorities, especially in the Senate. Yeah. Because in the Senate, we — we need nine votes. I'm not going to get nine votes. They're not going to vote. They always vote in a block. They'll do anything to hurt the Republican Party, even if it hurts and me in particular, by the way, I have to say. But uh, even if it hurts, no matter what, even if it hurts our nation, we could have laws drawn in one hour or less. They're already drawn to solve every one of these problems. But we can't get the Democrats. That's why I hope Republicans get out and vote and give us majorities where we can do what we have to do. But we give a lot of money to these countries to uh, — if you look uh, — El Salvador. If you look at what we give to Honduras and Guatemala, tens of millions of dollars. In one case, $400 million. They do nothing for us. I called them. I said, very nicely, you're not going to get any money if you let this happen. And all of a sudden, they're starting to close it up tightly. They're trying. But a lot of people have gathered, and a lot of people are looking at Democrats. Why did they gather? You know, there's a lot of information that is being — hopefully, you people are looking. But how come this happened? Because people are saying there's a lot of money being passed around so that this would normally hit just before election. But I happen to think it's a great issue for the Republican. This is a great Republican issue. Uh, with that being said, I called Mexico. We just — drew a great new deal with Mexico. We have a very good relationship with Mexico. I said, look, we have lousy laws. I hope you're not going to let these people come through your country and march a thousand miles up through your country and come through our borders, because our laws are horrendous. And as of this moment, you see better than I do, because I haven't been able to see it. You've been so busy with water for California. But uh, it's being stopped as of this moment by Mexico. So we appreciate very much what Mexico is doing. But as of this moment, you see what's happening. It's being stopped. 
But you have 4,000 people got together. And they got together in a certain way. And a lot of people, I, I hope you people are going to look at why this happened at this time. But it's okay. We are about law and order and borders and jobs. And they are about allowing crime to enter our country with open borders. Because many of those people, a percentage, a big, fairly big percentage of those people are criminals. And they want to come into our country. And they're criminals. And it's not happening on my watch. It's not going to happen. So as of this moment, I thank Mexico. I hope they continue. But as of this moment, I thank Mexico. If that doesn't work out, we're calling up the military. Not the Guard. We're calling up the military. And we're going to have the military stationed. They're not coming into this country. They might as well turn back. They're not coming into this country. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.